Well, happy Easter, everyone. And since it's Easter, that means it's Sunday, and that means it's time for the weekend video. Get ready. Hey everybody. Well, being it's Easter Sunday, that means that uh, Christians around the world commemorate um, the resurrection of Jesus Christ commemorate and celebrate. I think we do more commemorating than we really do celebrating either that or if we're going to celebrate, we don't celebrate enough. We don't celebrate what it was enough. And um, Paul celebrated his death and his resurrection. He celebrated it, it very much. In um, Romans, um, Paul talks about the resurrection and uh, it's a very long letter and it's in uh, Explicit detail because Paul has so much he wants to get across and he does it in in complete detail He likes to talk about the faith of Christ. He talks about sin. He talks about Adam uh, He talks about the resurrection And he talks about the law and he talks about grace He has a lot he wants to cover and he goes into them in great detail and he um, compares things along the way because he's he's wanting to get to certain points it's a very long letter so you you uh if you read that letter it's no chapter is standalone you should always have read the chapter before so basically you need to read the whole thing because in that letter of romans he talks about the resurrection at the very beginning in chapter one in the first few verses then you don't hear him use the word again until chapter six that's because he wants to get to what he was talking about in chapter one he used that word but it's so magnanimous that he wants to get to its importance and to do that he's got to go through quite a few other subjects that he wants to talk about and he does it through um a a very uh intricate comparison with, with each subject here he compares things as to why things are the way they are so if this happens then this happens and if that has happened then this must happen and if this, this has happened, this means this happened prior, and that's how he works it all the way through the letter. So you should read the whole letter and uh, not just grab one verse or one chapter and say you got it. But when he mentions it in chapter 6, you really need to know what he said in chapter 5. So um, in chapter 6, when he mentions it, he's, he's talking about um, in, in the resurrection... He says in verse 5, he says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Now that verse by itself is used by itself a lot to mean a, a bunch of different things, but he actually was picking up on the point he was making in chapter 5. He explained what that meant when he said planted in him in his death. In chapter 5, especially verses 12 through 18, um, he talks about, in 19, actually, you can go a little further, really, but it's the whole chapter, but the crux of it is in this very, very large section, um, several several verses, seven, seven really powerful verses. And in um, chapters 12, or chapter 5, verses 12 through 18, he talks about how by one man, all were condemned, and death reigned in, in all. And, and also by one, um, one man, uh, Jesus Christ, who is in this case, um, he's, also, uh, he's also referred to as the last Adam in, in other places. But um, in, this, in this man, Jesus Christ, he says, by the, in, in, in the same way that one were all dead, one was all, all condemned, one were all judged, and they were dead in sin, they were condemned. But also by one man, um, they're all raised to righteousness. So he's talking about how everybody who was in the seed of Adam was raised to life in the seed of, in the seed of Christ. And he, he concludes it by saying in verse 18, Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Um, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men 
unto justification of life. And so he says that everybody who was in the first Adam and was condemned to death or was also in the last Adam and raised to life. And then now he wants to get to the resurrection because he's, what he's saying is this happened at the cross. This happened at the resurrection of Christ. So getting back to chapter 6 again, let's start a couple verses earlier. And he said, um, So know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, meaning those who were Adam, which was all, were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. He's saying that all died in Christ's death. And therefore, if we all died in Christ's death, then we all also were buried by him, with him by baptism into death. That, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So he's using this planted word, and this is very consistent with Paul because he explains the importance of the resurrection in other letters to Corinthians, and um, he talks about this very same thing. But in, in Christ's resurrection, which has happened, which he has already explained has happened, that's where everyone was raised to the justification of life. No one is condemned. Everyone is justified in life. They are raised to life by him. Now, he says we were planted together in the likeness of his death. In Corinthians, um, both letters, actually, Paul talks about that same planting, and he calls it being sown with him. We were sown with him, and we, since we were in him, in him, as it says in chapters 5 and 6 of Romans, we were, we were in Christ, and he was the seed. And when he rose from the dead, we rose together with him, in him, in Christ, of incorruptible seed. Sin and death had been destroyed in that death, burial, and resurrection. Sin and its death, its consequence, its judgment, its condemnation, everything that goes with it, were destroyed in that death baptism of all humanity into Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. The thing we need to be celebrating about the resurrection is that we are all righteous and incorruptible and sin is gone thanks to what happened 2,000 years ago in the resurrection of Jesus Christ that we commemorate on Easter. It's revolutionary, folks. I know. Have a revolutionary.